Look, my answer to this question is simple. If there is no free will in the world, then the Bhagavad Gita is junk. And there's no point of the Bhagavad Gita. And if the Bhagavad Gita is junk, then Sanatana Dharam is junk. And then everything else is to have any sort of meaning. Think for a second. If astrology was the only thing, the end all be all of everything that is governed in the universe, then Sri Krishna did not have to go through all of that problem, all of that difficulty, all of that trials that he made to stop the war that was Mahabharat. To go through all of the problems, to convince Arjun to pick up his Gandhiv bow again and fight, he would just have, you know, relaxed and waited for the right moment where, okay, Arjun is going to regain his inspiration in about seven days. Let me just relax. He could have just done that. So there's something that Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. He says, there is nothing unattainable for me in this universe, O Parth, and still I work. Your personal power is defined by your ability to work and express your will into the world even if your fate is sealed. So let's assume your fate is sealed. Let's assume you have no free will. What are you going to do? Are you going to stop trying? Are you going to stop working? Are you going to stop striving? These are the kind of people who have problems with Saturn. <laughs> These are the kind of people who have problems with Rahu when he comes along. These two things are just two sides of the same coin. You can go on working hard, trying to take on the world from your ego plane and fall flat on your face again and again and again because you're just doing that from an unconscious state. You're doing that purely from your ego without thinking about the higher meaning attached to your actions without contemplating for a second the higher purpose which needs to be embodied in every action that you perform. You can do that in the same way. You can just surrender to fate and fall into inaction. And when you fall into inaction, there is another thing that Sri Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that action should always be higher than inaction, O Parth, because through the path of inaction, even the basic activities required for the sustenance of life will start becoming more and more difficult. Ultimately, you know, you will uh, stop making the effort even to uh, stay afloat if you fall into a river because if God wants, he'll save me. I'm not going to put in any effort. It's already written down. It's when you act in a way, it's when you act in a way that only you have the power to change your life and surrender your karma to the universe and to God as if he who has all the power. That's the sweet spot. That's when you make a ton of progress like that. You have been given this body. You have been given this life. You have been given your struggles. You have been given your difficulties to work on yourself to hone your abilities, to rise above everything that holds you down, makes you feel weak as a human being. You've been given all of that, not because you were meant to be held back, but because you're a human being and that is what is the nature of experience of this material plane. That is what is the nature of experience of this physical body. It is said, even the devas are secretly jealous of human beings because we have the power to work for something, strive for something. For them, it's all rosy, it's all fun. 
for us. Every single step, every single action can potentially be fatal. You don't know. You might just, you know, <laughs> get an early meeting with God if you lose a step on your way down uh, from a staircase. Could happen to me. Could happen to anybody. That's the beauty of being a human being. So, free will versus astrology. Astrology is very important, very helpful, very effective in helping you understand the cosmic plan for your existence. In helping you understand your strengths, your weaknesses, your hidden talents. But all of that only makes sense when you also leverage the free will that has been granted to you and build upon what was given to you. See, look, you are already born with a particular set of skills, a particular set of talents, a particular set of uh, things that are bound to go your way. Everybody is born with some fortune. That is there. That is a given. Now you can either restrict yourself to just that or you can move beyond that by building upon what was given to you, by working hard. This is the thing about Asuras. You've read all of these great stories about Asuras working hard. Even uh, the Surya Siddhanta was revealed by uh, the sun god to an Asur. So, you know, you sitting here thinking about free will versus astrology, should I, should I not? And meanwhile, if you look at the Asuras, which is, you know, meanwhile, look at people in Pataluk, which is uh, in this day and age, people in America, they don't give a damn about this. They are working, they are achieving, they are doing what they can. Now, that's also not very healthy, but you, want, you need to understand that progress will take place irrespective of how you feel about everything. You will have to act irrespective of what your beliefs are. The economy is going to impact you irrespective of what your chart says. You cannot escape this world. This world and the actions of every other person in this world also has a bearing on you. And therefore your actions also have a huge bearing. Even if in a small way, but it's the starting of a chain reaction that has the potential to change the world. It is not unless you claim that power that has been given to you by divine. That you will see any change happen. So when we're talking about astrology and free will, I think there is, there is no separation. There is no either or here. You have free will, you also have astrology. Astrology is supposed to aid your free will. You're supposed to move towards your purpose, your goal in this lifetime by combining these two. And then you have Tantra. Everything that is not good in your chart, you have mantras, you have sadhana, you have tapasya. This is what I talk about in my life coaching program. You go to my life coaching program, go to my you know website. You will see I have mentioned here, mentioned over there with a lot of examples how uh, you know, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, the famous yogi who wrote Autobiography of a Yogi, he writes that I would intentionally pick out difficult periods of my life. When the astrologer would say that I'm going to go through difficult times, I would intentionally pick out those times and force myself to do things that were not conducive to that planetary period. And I was able to find that Although I encountered a lot of difficulty, I was still able to accomplish most of those tasks. That is the power of astrology and your effort combined. Okay, so stop thinking that there is a choice here. There is no either or here. Both of these things, they move together. One is to aid your understanding of yourself. The other is to aid your understanding of your purpose, aid your understanding of your Akashic records, of, of, of the universe. Okay. So uh, 
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to your channel so that you can stay abreast of all the wonderful content that I post here. If you want a personal session with me, you can follow the link given in the description box. It's going to take you to my website and I'll take it further from there.